If James bought 20 bagels and three-fourths of them were plain, while the rest were all cinnamon, how many cinnamon bagels did he buy? Let me give you a chance now if you'd like to to pause the video, try to figure this out. If you get stuck, don't worry because we're just going to go over the answer anyway. Okay, let's talk about this question here. So basically, we know that there are 20 bagels total. And we also know that there are both plain bagels and cinnamon. So if we add up the total number of plain bagels and the total number of cinnamon bagels, we're going to get the total number of bagels, which we already know is 20. So basically what I want to do here is take the fact that three fourths of them were plain, and I'm going to use that to find the number of plain bagels. So all you're going to do to start this off is you're going to do 20 times three fourths. If you just use a calculator, that's probably the fastest way to do it you will get 15. If we update our equation, we have 20 equals 15 plus C. I'm going to do the opposite of addition, which is subtraction. And whatever I do to one side, I also have to do it to the other side. So on the right hand side of the equation, the 15s cancel out. And on the left hand side, I do 20 minus 15. And when I rewrite this, I see that 5 equals C. And I'm going to put the written solution that I typed out here for you on the screen. You can pause the video and take all the time you need to, to study this written solution if you'd like to. And whenever you're ready, we'll keep moving. Debbie, a secretary at a television factory, receives a call from a university staff member inquiring about the wait time for his order. The factory produces television sets at a rate of one television set per half hour. If the university placed an order to buy 66 television sets, how long should Debbie tell the staff member his wait will be? A. Less than one day. B. Exactly one day. C. More than one day but less than two days. D. More than two days but less than three days. Or E. Exactly two days. So now's your chance to pause the video if you'd like to and try this out. And if you get stuck, don't worry because we're just going to go over the answer. Okay, so for this question right here, I'm going to start with the fact that the order was for 66 television sets. I'm going to just put 66 T and I'm going to make kind of a cursive T here so that I don't accidentally think it's a plus sign. So I'm going to take this rate up here. The rate is one television set per half hour. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply 66 T by one T and I'm going to put point up here. I'm going to put point five hours because the rate is one television set per half hour. So for half an hour, I'm just going to put 0.5 H. So the reason I set it up like this is so that my T's will cancel out and we get an answer in hours. So 66 times 0.5 is 33 hours. So the last twist here to this question is just realizing that one day equals 24 hours and two days is 48 hours here. So the answer is C, more than one day, but less than two days. So here is the written solution on the screen that I wrote out for you. If you want to, you can pause the video and study it, but just know that this should say 66, not 65. It's a little typo that I made here. So this should be 66, not 65. But anyway, whenever you're ready, we'll go on to the next question. So this video's champion shout out goes to a test taker who just finished the GED and says, about the math section, I studied tough math problems, quadratic equations, slope, foil, etc. And as I was getting it down, it helped me understand a lot of the other things I didn't previously understand in math. Everyone here can do it. Remember the test isn't filled with only hard questions, so don't get nervous. And the test takers headed off to trade school, which is really exciting. What is the surface area of a sphere with a radius of two centimeters? Now, just to save you some time since we're just practicing, I went ahead and put the formula for the surface area of a sphere right here for you. But just know that on your test, you will have to go to the formula sheet and find this formula here. All right, so let me give you a chance now to pause the video, take all the time you need with this, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so for a case like this, basically all we're gonna do is take this formula here, and we're told that two centimeters is the radius, so I'm gonna take two, and I'm gonna substitute it into the formula here for R. All right, so when I do the calculation, I'm gonna do four, and I'm just gonna leave the pi here, and I'm gonna do two squared, which is just four. So what I'm gonna do is four times four, which is 16, and I'm just gonna leave the pi right here. 
All right, and so my final answer is A16. All right, now I'm sure there's someone watching this, maybe you, who's confused right now about the Pol Pi thing. Uh, sometimes on the test, they might ask you to actually plug 3.14 in here for pi. Sometimes you won't have to use pi in the calculation, all right? So in this case here, if we look at the answer choices, note that pi is left in each one of the answer choices. So if you see that on your test, your life's a lot simpler because you don't have to do anything with the pi, all right? If you don't see pi here, then what that means is that you would have to do four times 3.14 times four, all right? So just know I would memorize this, that pi is equal to 3.14. Okay, now it's not actually 3.14, it's 3.14 and then a bunch of numbers that go on and on and on. But just for your test, I would just know that pi equals 3.14. So here's the written solution. I'll let you take all the time you need to pause this and study if you want to the solution. And if not, that's fine too. We'll move on to the next question. This next question is the hardest question in the video in my opinion. You can let me know down below if you think that there was a harder question or if you think this was the hardest. I'll let you try it now. On Julie's math test, she is asked to determine the radius of a cone with a volume of 8 pi cubic meters and a height of 6 meters. Which answer should Julie pick? Is it A, B, C, D, or E? Now, just to save you some time since we're just practicing for right now, I've given you the formula for uh, the volume here of a cone. And it's V equals one third pi R squared H. And just keep in mind that on the test, if you get a question like this, you'll want to go to that math formula sheet and find this formula. I'm just giving it to you just to save time since we're only practicing. So let me give you a chance now to pause the video and I'll let you try this out. And if you get stuck, don't worry because we'll just go over the answer. So a good starting point here, I think, is to take what we know and just plug it into the formula here. So we're told that the volume is eight pi. And so I can take that eight pi and just substitute it in to the formula for V. And we're also told that the height is six meters. So I can just take that six and substitute it in here for H. So let me rewrite and I'll show you what it looks like. So here we have eight pi equals one third pi R squared times six. And basically what we can do now is we can cancel out pi from both sides of the equation because we've got a pi on both sides of our equal sign. And we can also do six divided by three, all right? And I realize that there are other ways to look at this. This isn't the only way to, uh, to proceed, but I think that this is a pretty simple way to do it because that's gonna leave us with eight equals two times r squared. And so basically now what we wanna do is divide by two on both sides. And once I do that and I rewrite, I get four, equals r squared. It, it's tempting to see d right here and think d is the correct answer. And if you did that, don't worry, that's a really common mistake. But what we actually wanna do is we wanna take the square root of both sides here. So what I'm gonna do is take the square root of four and I'm gonna take the square root of r squared. And what I'm gonna get is r, all right? Because remember, we don't wanna find the radius squared, we just wanna find the radius. So what I end up with is two equals r. Two is the correct answer here. 